historically we have really focused on cognitive markers, but if we go back to the history of dementia as, as is published, um, the first patient assessed and, and written about by a, uh, August, by, by Olive's Alzheimer was August D, who presented to the hospital with emotional dysregulation and suspiciousness, and then was diagnosed with dementia. So in that case, she presented with MBI and, you know, and, and, and then was diagnosed with dementia. It, it's important because it just extends the group in whom we can, we can um, capture dementia earlier. There are really nice data um, from Hopkins um, and uh, Jeannie Leotsakos is the first uh, senior author on this paper, where they looked at the relative emergence of neuropsychiatric symptoms compared to cognitive diagnoses. And 30% of people who develop Alzheimer's disease actually developed neuropsychiatric symptoms before a cognitive diagnosis. Now, if we are waiting for cognitive changes, we're capturing 70% of the at-risk group. But if we want the earliest detection, um, again, we can we can invoke biomarkers and test everyone on the planet and find out who has biomarker positivity. It's not realistic or feasible, scientifically sound or wise. Um, or you can capture at-risk groups. So we're not talking about screening. We're talking about you know finding your 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 risk groups. And this is just another way to to find that risk group. Um, and then we're, we're using that combination. We're leveraging cognitive changes if they're there uh, and behavioral changes if they're there to find, find that group at highest risk. Um, and, and then we can use our, our funds, which are limited, no matter what setting you're in to determine if indeed there is Alzheimer's disease under the hood, as it were. We also have other non-cognitive markers that, that uh, complement behavioral change. Uh, you can look at changes in hearing, in olfaction, in gait, for example, in grip strength. And our, our Canadian dementia guidelines actually have recommendations for all of those non-cognitive markers. And so we are really moving to the cognition plus stage where we're emphasizing that that anything that your brain controls, if it changes persistently in late life, it might be a marker of underlying dysfunction. And while no one will debate that if you're an older adult and you have a change in cognition and that it persists, well, that you better get a dementia workup. Why not a change in behavior? Why not a change in gait? Why not a change in sensory motor function elsewhere? And I think if we really expand beyond the, what I call the cognocentric view of Alzheimer's disease, we can capture more people earlier with more robust um, models and then more robust treatment effects thereafter.